Welcome back, everyone, to the GGBL. We've got the wild card playoffs, the National League side and the American League side. But you guys know what we call the leagues by now, the All-Stars League and the Naturals League. Got to keep ingraining that in everybody's minds because it is different. But we've got a rematch of last season's NL wild card game, the San Francisco Grizzlies taking on the Richmond Good Boys. And these two teams, it's starting to feel like a little bit of a rivalry might be brewing because we have been meeting each other quite often with a lot of big games at stake. And right off the get-go, Tyler Glass now looks in Cy Young form. Two straight strikeouts. Matt Olson ends up getting up a walk. So we do have one runner on base here. Kyle Lewis, he's also going to strike out. So three outs to get. And Glass now gets three strikeouts on those good boys. So no hits, no damage for Richmond. And San Francisco shuts us down. Now Tristan McKenzie went 12-9 and this season. Is that going to play against a 100-win San Francisco roster? I don't know. We're going to find out. Nobody down. Lead-off hitter Byron Buxton is going to go triple on us. That 99 speed, not even Kyle Lewis. He's got a good throwing arm. And Darius Wilson, who's got an even better throwing arm at shortstop, can't even get that 99 speed Buxton. Luckily, though, Tristan McKenzie shuts down the number two hitter, Satchel Michaels. And then next up, we've got Christian Yelich. A little pop-up in front of Camargo. Well, behind Camargo, in front of Tora. Tora can't make a good throw. It's an all right throw. A little offline, apparently. And that's going to lead to a single, an RBI single for San Francisco. Yelich is going to actually take off here and get thrown out. Thanks to the strong throwing arm by Joey Bart. 19 seven miles an hour. So Yelich was moving. He's capable of stealing a bag, but Joey Bart was just a little bit better there. Had a little bit better of a jump. Good throw. Full count here on Ryan Burner in the top of the third inning, and he is going to go oppo taco. Going to tie this ball game up. Ryan Burner has been on some kind of hot streak here towards the last week of the season. This guy was a September call-up, and Ever since, he has been a focal point for this good boy's roster. He's been playing designated hitter. He's a first baseman shortstop, so he can play either or. But, man, is he able to put the ball out of the ballpark? That has a real, been a really a big surprise for us here on this good boy's roster. But with still with one down here in the top of third, Matt Olson is also going to go oppo taco. That's back-to-back -back dingers for the good boys here, and it's now 2-1 to one on the Cy Young winner. Tie the glass now. One two pitch here to Johan Camargo, and this is actually going to hit him on the back foot inside that batter's box. So Camargo trying to get out of the way, but it is going to hit him. So a 3 2 pitch here with batters on first and second, and Michael Root's going to draw a walk as well. So glass now struggling a little bit here in the third inning. Joey Bart, a 1 1 pitch, a curveball or changeup, breaking pitch off speed. And Joey Bart is going to hang back there and serve it the other way for a two-run double. It is now 4-1 to one, Richmond. They're staking out to an early lead here. Take one more look at this thing just right past Satchel Michaels at first base. And he's able to drive in two more runs for Richmond. So that's ground ball by Brock Middlebrook to Keston Hira. And that's going to do it. But the damage has been done for Richmond. Base hit here, Trace Thompson, the very next inning here in the bottom of the third. And Joe Shatora trying to fire this thing back in. He's got a good, strong throwing arm, but just a little bit off in the last two throws that we've seen from Joe Shatora. Probably could have given himself a better chance to get Trace Thompson there, but he could not. Anyway, Tristan McKenzie strikes out Byron Buxton. It's a big out to get. And then this curveball, outside corner, Satchel Michaels visibly upset with the umpire. I kind of agree with him. It must have been just a little bit off the plate. It was a questionable call, but in those situations, you can never leave it up to the umpire. Eight strikeouts, by the way, for Tyler Glass now. How is he losing at this point? Well, this might be an indication. Doesn't seem to be very much focus going on here with San Francisco. Maybe they thought they could just walk into this and beat us down. A hundred win team right here. Satchel Michaels not tall enough for that Keston Hira just overthrows him. Either way, it looks like we're trying to manufacture a run here. Kyle Lewis actually going to strike out in a really, really tough pitch. A 
Glass now gets nine strikeouts now through four innings. Just absolutely crazy performance those thus far, getting outs through the Ks, but not through regular out. No defense, can't rely on it. Can't rely on it. J.J. Cabrera here in the bottom of the fourth inning. A base knock right back up the middle. It's going to score the next run for San Francisco. Rookie of the year for the NL comes through for the Grizz. Going to strike out Jonathan India. And we got two down here. Tristan McKenzie's also got the strikeout pitch working. He's got six possibly here through four innings. Will Till coming, coming right up here. One, two, pitch. A little ground ball. Olsen got to hang with it. Got to hustle. Will Till's got some speed barreling down that line. Hard 90s only, man. Hard 90s only. But J.J. Cabrera, Rookie of the Year, comes through and cuts this thing down a 4-2 to two game. That's going to be a base knock here for Johan Camargo with one down in the top of the fifth. And that is actually going to signal the end of Tyler Glasnow's outing today. He had over 100 pitches after that base hit. Now it's up to Dallas Keuchel, and he's going to get a ground ball. Look at the smooth double play. Smooth double play, baby. Will Till gets it done. Forward momentum all the way. Catching here a nice throw this time. And that's going to do it for Richmond's half beating. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth, and we've got McKenzie still getting that strikeout pitch working for him, man. He's been doing great today. Bottom fifth still. Buxton going to ground out. He's only got that one hit, that leadoff triple, to start the game off. But ever since, no dice for Buxton. Next inning for Richmond, Darius Wilson still looking for his first hit of the game. He grounds out into a double play, started again by Will Till. Let's take a look at Aaron Ashby's outing in this game. Let's see if he can shut down this Grizzlies offense. And so far, so good. He's going to get a nice little rolling ground ball to D. Will. He makes a nice throw across to first base from the grass. Good throw. Brock Middlebook, good throw. Two down. Two down. These are routine plays. I say good throws, but these are routine plays. They got to be done. They got to be had. Then again, I, I keep harping on Keston Hira for that terrible throw from second as we see him strike out here on that nice fastball by Aaron Ashby. Now, here's a nice play by Brock Middlebrook. Can he get the throw off? Again, hard 90s by Will Till. And now San Francisco is pretty much back in this game. Seth Elledge has got to come on and shut these guys down with one out. Trace Thompson looking to do some damage. He can't. He whiffs at a slider. Nasty looking thing. Elledge looks like he's going to get out of this thing. He's got Isaiah kiner Falefa. 2-2 pitch. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. He got him on strikes. Beautiful, beautiful job by Seth Elledge, man. The reason we have him, he's got a lot of break. He's got a lot of break and good velo. He's tough to hit as a late inning reliever. Let's jump to Ijaz Piasfiu's next appearance here. Bottom eight, Buxton still. After that triple, he has done nothing. This is kind of a little bit of a questionable call. It could go either way. It was a 50-50 pitch, but Piasfiu wins that battle. And then we got, ooh, whoa, look at that hop. Did you see that hop? Supposed to hit like the corner, the, the cutout between grass and dirt. But Wilson sticks with it. And then Yelich comes up and almost gets this thing to 4-3. to three. So Piasfiu does a job. And Richmond, we're going to take this thing to the ninth. Let's go top nine. Looking for some insurance. And that is exactly what we are going to get. Joey Bart has been hot all game long. And he delivers a solo home run. 415 feet. That's a big time blast. And Dallas Keuchel. They have not relieved Dallas Keuchel. He's been in the game since the fifth inning. I mean, he's been going and going and going. He's got like, what, 60-some-odd pitches in this? I mean, it's, yeah, 40, 47, actually. 47 pitch after that base hit. Now Darius Wilson here with a 1-2 pitch. He's going to shoot this thing right down the line. This is going to get all the way to the wall. We've got Middlebrook here with 84 speed. We're going to round him past third, and he's going to be gunned out. What a relay throw by Trace Thompson and Keston Hira to cut him down. Currently 5-2 game. Would have been 6-2 had the throw just been a little bit off. In the playoffs, every run matters. That's a really great relay throw. Ryan Berner comes up. He's been hot all postseason in the last week of the year. This well, postseason just started literally in this game. <laughs> But he's going to fly out here 
deep to left, and then Matt Olson delivers the big knock. He's going to make this thing 6-2, to two, and that is all Richmond is going to get here in the top of the ninth. So a four-run lead with three outs to get. Question is, is can we do it? Base hit for Keston Hira, so he makes up for his error, maybe just a little bit. It would really help if San Francisco scores right here. J.J. Cabrera against Piasfiu. A 1-1 pitch. Ground ball. Olsen back over here to Wilson. Back over to Olsen again. And that is a double play. Manager for the good boys. As we like Hunter Wood in this matchup, we got to go get Jonathan India. The battle of the guys with long hair. And it looks like we're going to win this thing. Middlebrook makes the throw. And the Richmond Good Boys have downed the 100-game winning San Francisco Grizzlies for the second year in a row in the wild card. It's got to hurt, man. It has got to hurt if you're if you are a San Francisco Grizzlies fan, man. It's it's uh, you know Richmond's got your number apparently. I mean, we beat them in gameplay to to First, get to the postseason. Now we beat you here in the wild card for the no second errors. straight Let's season. It's deck. like, what Thank does San Francisco have to do? Game. Meanwhile, L.A. goes on to the game. divisional round, and they get San Francisco. They get Richmond, actually. They get Richmond. So we, they got to play us again. So this is the same path that happened in year number two. We Richmond beats San Fran. Richmond plays L.A., and we'll probably get smoked. So, you know, is it good for baseball? Is it good for the GGBL? Probably not. Probably not. We probably needed San Fran to face off against L.A. in the divisional. Have the two best teams in the in the game, really, in the, in the whole entire league, face off against each other to determine who goes to the NLCS. But here we are, Richmond. Hopefully we can, you know, be that team that goes on a miraculous little run here. But we'll find out. We'll find out on Friday with Game 1s and Game 2s as simulation. So Game 1s will all be played. Game 2s will be simulated. We'll give a little update on the divisional rounds. But guys, let's get back here to gameplay. We got Nathan Evaldi taking on the Minnesota Jacks. So the Nuggets and the Jacks playing off here in the AL wildcard. And that will do it for our action here tonight. We'll preview a little bit. We'll get a bracket preview of the divisional round. But so far, it's, it's, you know, it's looking all right here for Minnesota. They've got two down here. That's a base knock. Nelson De La Cruz did everything that he possibly could to keep this thing in the infield. But Jamie Truis comes up the rookie, and he strikes out against the veteran Nathan Evaldi. Now, let's turn over things to Tarek Skubal. 180 strikeouts with a 1-1-4 whip. I love looking at the whip because it really gives you a good indicator of how well that pitcher is locating and how he's getting guys out. So a 1-1, that's pretty good for Tarek Skubal. So he's going to strike out Freddie Freeman. The former MVP winner of the GGBL. Things are looking good here for Minnesota. Here's Papierski going down the line. That's going to fall right on the line. And Yasiel Puig goes all the way to the warning track in foul territory. That's going to be a triple, a leadoff triple for Minnesota. Yeah, you heard it right. Minnesota. Connor Scott, leadoff hitter. Base knock. He's going to score the first run of the game. And it goes to Minnesota. Ivaldi was in second place in the AL Cy Young Award race. So just to kind of give you an idea again of how good he's been this season, he's got to step up in this situation. Mike Price delivers a base knock here. Now here comes Connor Scott. He's probably rounding third. He is against Ben Benintendi. Not the greatest throwing arm out there in left field, but... That's going to score another run for Minnesota. So Mike Price, the batting title winner for the AL. Gets it done. Nick Solak. He's going to ground out. That's a really nice play. That's a really, really nice play. Randy Rosarena, ground ball here in seconds. They're going to make the throw. Two down. Looks like Minnesota's really embodying that Minnesota Twins from the early 2000s. Just manufacturing runs. <laughs> Moving the guy over the third, but they can't they can't capitalize here. So it's still going to be 2 nothing. We're actually going to go ahead and jump all the way to the top of the fifth. Still 2 nothing game, but here's Mike Price with a line drive right back at Freddie Freeman, and he's able to catch it and tag the runner. So a double play, a very unconventional 
double play here for Las Vegas, but they get the job done. Ground ball here, and Solak is out again. Nice job by the Vegas Nuggets. By the way, Nuggets only have one hit, so I could have really just kept this thing going inning by inning to get you guys kind of feeling that, oh, is Tarek Scuba going to throw a no-no? But why if you already know the end result? <laughs> but he's still going to limit these guys to one hit, and we're going to jump all the way to Carson Fulmer's appearance here in this game. 3-3-9 three, three, with a 1-2-2. Two, two. That's very that's acceptable. We're going to jump to the top of the sixth inning with one down. Jamie Truist comes up and hits a line drive. Wow, that's a huge shot right there, right over Yasiel Puig's head. He's going to get in with a one-out double. And in a 2 nothing game, this is a big situation for both teams. Hannibal Lobo, custom prospects. You have the Truist and Lobo custom prospect deal that you got going on there, plus Mike Price. So this team is getting pretty loaded. This Minnesota Jacks team is, you know, they don't get a lot of love in the comment section or the, with the viewership. But, man, they're going to be gonna be a good team for a long time coming if these custom prospects come through. Speaking of custom prospects, Nelson De La Cruz, the shortstop for the Nuggets, gets a base knock here. And in the bottom of the seventh inning, this is absolutely crucial for Vegas to come through right here. Scoobal has been great, only giving up two hits, a walk, and four strikeouts. He's been on. So a 2-2 pitch here to Freddie Freeman, and the MVP from last season. Two run shots. He's making a case. He says, guys, I should have been the MVP this season as well. A <laughs> two-run homer and Scooble. That's the thing about baseball, man. You can pitch seven great innings, and then one inning, one mistake, can blow the game up. That's why it's so tough. It's so tough to shut a good hitter and a good offense down. But Scooble has been great up till this point. And, you know, two runs is nothing to scoff at, man. He's, he's been pitching great regardless of this home run. But, man, oh, man, does it set the Jacks back just a little bit regarding momentum? So top nine, that's all the Las Vegas Nuggets are going to get here is the two runs. So top nine, Matt Chapman, the free agent acquisition from this year, comes through the base knock, and now it's up to Marco Luisiano, a trade piece that they got from Carolina back in year number one. Luisiano deep drive over Benintendi's head into the stands, a two-run home run. And the Jacks will take the lead back. It is four to two. For those of you guys that are watching the XBA, I, I, I get these two teams like mixed up from time to time. We got the Las Vegas Nuggets and Minnesota Jacks. You got the Las Vegas Jacks in the XBA. So you know what? If I said that in this thing, I'm, I apologize. It might be a, just a little bit of a a little bit of a slip there. But dudes, four to two game. Marco Luciano, huge knock. Bottom nine, Craig Kimbrell comes on. He's Mr. Automatic, you know it. Luciano makes a nice play at short. Price with the catch, completing the putout. Nelson De La Cruz stares down a knuckle curve by Kimbrell. That's two down, one more out to get. Jack Matura, custom prospect. Fly ball to Randy at Rosarena, and the Minnesota Jacks will come through and get the win. They are advancing to take on the Seattle Emeralds in the divisional round of the AL brackets. So guys, good game all the way around. Minnesota, by the way, four runs on ten hits, so they just did not let up. Scooble was great. The bullpen for Minnesota was great as well, even though, hey, man, you know, the, the Nuggets came through in the clutch there with Freddie Freeman's home run, but that's all they could muster up against this pitching staff. That's all they could do. Three hits on the day. Tourist a double, Papierski with a triple. We got the home run by Luisiano. I mean, the Jacks were on today, whereas the Nuggets were kind of, you know, they, they couldn't really get it going. They, they couldn't get that... They couldn't get the, the engine started. They couldn't get revved up, it seemed like. Um, and when that happens in the playoffs, it's bad timing, but sometimes it does happen. You could have a really good season, and for whatever reason, just in one game, 
you know, it, d it determines your whole entire outcome for the season. It just sucks. It sucks. But guys, that's it for this video. Leave a like if you like this thing. We've got Michigan, Chicago, Minnesota, Seattle on the AL side. We've got Houston, Carolina, Richmond, and Los Angeles. Coming up on Friday, we've got all game ones for all four games, all four matchups there, all game ones there. And then game twos, no matter who wins game one and whatever happens, game twos will be simulated. So somebody in some matchups will be up 2 nothing, and some matchups will, will be 1-1. to one. That's just how it's going to roll, and we'll just let the CPU kind of decide who's going to win game twos of these matchups. Either way, man, Friday, that's what we got going on. And then next Wednesday, we'll have game threes and we'll finish out the divisional rounds and preview the championship series on both sides. And then on Friday, we'll start the championship series and then just repeat, rinse and repeat, man. So that's going to be that's gonna be awesome. Hope to, hope to have some good games here coming up. And guys, that's it for the video. Leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you on Friday night for the divisional rounds. As always, thank you guys for watching and peace.